It's OK Football's Champ Chat, where we round up everything that's gone on this game week in the championship, the greatest league in the world. And with me to go through all these games, I got Beefy, I got producer Matt, and we have, you'll recognize him from his Luton Town content on YouTube, like and subscribe to his channel, it's Lewis Williams. How are we all doing, chaps? All good? All good. Um, a f that day, Friday, when football was back after the pointless, pointless international break, I was so happy. And didn't they reward us with a very nice Friday night tie? Yeah, it was a good one, wasn't it? It was a good and, one. And uh, international breaks, all it's good for is exhausting the players and... Injuring up them. Yeah. Injuries, yeah. And, and you have to watch England play football, which is just not entertaining in any single way. Yeah, it's so pointless, isn't it? Um, but as this is recorded on Sunday, we can't discuss Hull versus Sunderland. Uh, but from a strictly non-biased point of view, I hope Hull gives Sunderland quite the runaround. Uh, I think that's <laughs> fair to say, right? That, that sounds very non-biased. Well yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, we are most definitely not Luton Town fans. I'd, I'd favour Sunderland in that one, I'm afraid. Yeah, I, think, I can't uh, see anything I past I think they're going to do, do Hull over. It looks that way. It looks that way. That's yeah. a d it's not quite a derby, is it? But it's a sort of similar mm. area in the country. I don't think they hate each other, though, do they? I think right. you've got a lot of angry Sunderland fans in your DMs yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> so how's that? Nothing different, then. How's yeah. that different from any other week? Yeah. <laughs> normally it's Sheffield United it's fans. It's normally Sheffield United fans. I, I appeased them by uh, making a video saying Sheffield United are going to walk the league, and then they you promptly lost <laughs> to Leeds, which we're going to discuss now. So Leeds 2 Sheffield United nil. I would say this is a Leeds masterclass. I think Chris Wilder got a lot wrong here. It was exhausting yeah. to watch this game. The mm. tempo was just fantastic. Levels like, above anything it, else in this league. It, it, it really was. I mean, Leeds just look unstoppable now. The, once the ball starts rolling, I think they're going to really build up some momentum. They were brilliant. And Weren't you saying Leeds are going to fall apart? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they've got to build up momentum first, get a nice run going, and then bottle it at the end <laughs> like they did last year. Yeah, I didn't understand the game plan behind Sheffield United's tactics because... Changed formation, went went back three yeah, as well. It was more cautious and I, I didn't get it because I felt like they actually gave Leeds a good game of football. I felt they would have stand a lot more chance. It, it was kind of like, right, we're going to counter, get Gustavo near our striker and hope for the best that we can like maybe nick a goal. It, didn't, it just never looked like it they, was ever going to They gave work. Leeds a lot of respect, and I think that was the mistake, wasn't it? Yeah. Just gave them too much respect and thought, we're the underdogs in this one, so let's play that way, and it, it just didn't work for them. Yeah. What's uh, what's the Sheffield United fan reaction? Because they, they tend to abuse you rather than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, I think they accepted Wilder's words as gospel that the better team won that week. They uh, were happy with that. I mean, the better team did win, Yeah, but... Yeah. They're, look, they they have no complaints. Like um, they know that it's a marathon, not a sprint, and that they'll they know. Well, the, the vibe on Reddit is that they they think they'll be back. They'll be up and uh, I think against it. I know. think they'll be back as well. Yeah, you know. yeah, they'll be fine. I, I think easy top two for Sheffield United. I think this is this is just like leg one of who's going to finish first and yeah. who's going to finish second. Do you reckon? I mean, Burnley back up there. They're back up there, but to be honest, I, I can't see beyond Leeds and Sheffield United. I, I, I described this in the prediction video with Ryman as what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. And that, that's how it felt, really. Okay. I mean, the, they held on in that first half against a bit of a battering. It would, took a really good goal to open the scoring as well. That, you know, first time from the corner... How that corner got through three or four players before he hit it on the volley, I don't know. But um, it took a really good goal to open the account for Leeds. So, you know, Sheffield United did hang on for a while, but they just never looked in the game, did they? No, no. But I think it'll be a very different game at Bramall Lane. Uh, let's talk about probably the most surprising result of the, of the game week. Cardiff 5. Plymouth nil. Now, where did this one come from? Is Omar Rizzo going to get the job full time? Well... I mean, first off, what a stupid sending off. Was it Sissoko? Yeah, but well, you can't put your hand on another no, player's neck. And you know exactly what's going to happen. The second you do that, you're getting sent off. And he, he didn't hang about, did he? He just uh, wandered off. Perry, Perry NG as well. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. He oh, yeah. Twatted yeah. the ball straight at him. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that, that really hurt them. 
Um, and then well, they, it, 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 they had a little go after the sending off, but to did. be honest, Cardiff, it looked like a, a heat seeker game in Rocket League. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Where yeah. like literally they could have hit the shot from the back of the stands and then we'd gone Just phew, straight, straight in. in. Like ridiculous goals that game. Yeah, there were I mean it was just a walkover. Just one of those really weird games where everything goes right, every single ball you play is perfect, every single shot you have finds a top corner and you know, the couple of brilliant goals in that as well. Yeah, Ruben Colwell, oh. what a player. I'd love to see him at Luton one day. I just I I feel he's probably going straight to the top though. He's not going to um he's not sticking around the championship for too long. Like the pass for the opening goal, then yeah. the the finish for the second was ridiculous. And did you see Rooney after the game? He looked about seventy five. Well he always looks seventy five. <laughs> no seven, you know. He lo- he looks like eighteen seventy five or <laughs> whatever year the uh, the Tudors were around. Yeah, he has got that Tudor beard and the well, he's moon face. He now. looks like Henry VIII, he's doesn't got he? A bit he of Henry looks VIII like a Tudorian him. picture right now. <laughs> it's a shame for Plymouth because I felt like they were actually building some yeah, momentum, yeah. especially with the, some good results. Obviously, of course, one was against us, but and then beating Blackburn, beating Sunderland, it felt like they were going to climb up that table because yep. he's under a lot of pressure after what happened at Birmingham and Derby. So yeah, I, I want English managers to do well. Yeah, I do as well. I love and Rooney. He's he's just a good guy, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Very funny when he does media work. Yeah, yeah. He, especially on like the overlap. I'm not shout out any other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right. Uh, the, the overlap. Follow us on Twitter or X or whatever it's called. Um, I think it's the overlap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. I don't yeah. go on X. It's, uh, it's owned by a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not. Not anymore. Anyway. Um, I think Plymouth will be fine this year. I, th- um, I think he'll keep them will. up. Yeah. And, yeah, I've seen you know, you, you bring him in, number one mission, stay up, and I think he's going to manage it. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Luton Town 3, Watford nil turned up. Only one team turned up for this Men, one. Men v boys, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was. Watford just looked terrible. I mean, Luton pressed them well. Uh, Luton just happened to click that day. But Watford were terrible. The amount of times they turned the ball over... And we were talking about it in the Luton Town show. Luton won eighty percent of all the aerial duels. Just completely outfought them, outmuscled them, outplayed them. Uh, One sided affair. Yeah. If first time Luton's actually properly turned up this season and if we replicate those types of performances, we'll climb up the table ourselves. Edwards will still remain Luton Town manager despite what the noise is with fans. What and what noise is that? Yeah, what noise? Yeah. <laughs> what noise? Um and yeah. No, noise from some of the fans. Yeah, some yeah. of the fans. Um, uh, yeah, and just hopefully at like the club which we think we are and compete at the right end of the championship. Yeah, definitely felt like Rob did his homework against Watford. We we had their number the whole game. Yeah, it's a big switch of play. They went long ball, two up top, um, and it really worked. Uh, just Watford just looked completely unprepared for it, for the tempo, for everything. Could be the starting point of the season for Luton, but at the same time, Watford absolutely terrible on the road. Yeah, they're not having yeah, not like having a good, good shipping. Four against Norwich, yep. three against Preston, three against Luton. It's um, pretty one. bad. Le- yeah, yeah, one. <laughs> I, I, d- I don't I don't see Watford getting relegated to be honest, but I do think upper mid table. I think like yeah, strong home form. Due, isn't it? Oh well, yeah, how cleverly it's been there nearly a year now, yeah, right? I don't sure. know if they can afford it to be honest. Like <laughs> sackings are expensive these days. They're like days. Tony Soprano with all the widows on the payroll. <laughs> got seventeen ex managers on the payroll still. <laughs> oh, okay. Moving on to Oxford United one, West Brom one, and this one, I, myself and Mark, we both backed Oxford to do it. We thought the West Brom wobble would continue, and. It was a great goal from Carlin Grant. Yeah, what it was hit. it? Carlin Grant but is also quality. But also, Oxford, they just, they just don't stop. And again, long throw into the box. It wasn't Lick just a long Scarlet. throw. It was a rocket. It was, it was crazy. It was Rory DeLapp-esque. It was, it was wasn't fantastic. it? fantastic. Yeah. I, mean, this, I had West Brom as a dark horse. Producer Matt had Oxford as a dark horse. Mm. It was the dark horse derby and honours even. Only just mind. I thought, um, looking at it, that... Uh, it was poor game management from West Brom because they could have just shut up shop and but they just kept kept going for it and you know get the ball in the corner and sit on it you don't need to be giving away 93rd minute equalizers to ridiculous long throws into the box can you shut up shop against this Oxford side though they're dogged I don't think so they no. are uh, it just showed the tenacity 
of them. You saw they had a few opportunities earlier in the game, etc. But yeah, there's I don't think there's any stopping them in this league. No, I've been very impressed with Oxford. When when mm. we played them, um, say we. Yeah, us being <laughs> Luton, Luton fans. Luton, yeah. When <laughs> Luton played Oxford, um, I was super impressed with them, how they defend as a team, attack as a team. I thought they got their summer recruitment extremely well. Didn't spend too much money, but mm. they just it was smart business. Established championship players, players that are hungry and want to prove something. And even when they've had a few knocks, they don't look like it, it, it lets them bother them. And they just, you know... Okay, it happened last week. It's a new week now, and we're going to put in a, a, a good performance, and that's what they keep doing. Uh, and this is a team without their talisman, Cameron Brannigan, as well. Like, what type of beast are they going to be when Brannigan comes back? Hopefully, he doesn't unsettle the team. No, I just like you say they they just look like a proper unit. Yeah. Um, uh, out of all the teams, they seem the one that's gelling the most together, and yeah. I don't think that's going to stop them at all. They're so well drilled. It, it's fantastic. I'm. I'm all in on the Oxford train. I absolutely love it and their terrible stadium. Right, on uh, to... No, it's, <laughs> it's three quarters of a great stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they got that massive TV screen. <laughs> at the end. Uh, I, I hadn't noticed that before. Do you think that's what did it? That When the long throw came in, there was no stand to block the sun and all the West Brom <laughs> players had it in their eyes. <laughs> well, what sun? We're, we're in English uh, winter Engl- now. Yeah, well... All oh, right, on to Preston North End 1, Coventry 0, and Lord Almighty, I don't know what's happening at Coventry. Could have been more than one, couldn't it? Yeah, it's, look, Preston, I think Watford got their season going with that, you know, bending over for a 3-0 win. And Emil Rees Jakobsen, what a player, again, causing problems. They look good, and um, to be honest, Woodman did all right, you know, some vital saves. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, like but they're say, good value still for their win. They are. And I think, you know, really lots of voices starting to be heard about Mark Robbins now. Well, there was a Barney in the in the crowd, wasn't there? Yeah, he, he was offering out a fan. Well, so I wouldn't take on Mark Robbins, would you? Nah, he looks no, pretty messy, I, doesn't I'd, he? I'd leave him well alone. Yeah, it j- just feels like it's starting to switch. He's got a lot of defenders at the club still. And a lot of the online chat is that He's got enough credit in the bank to survive this, but there's more than a minor- small minority now that are calling for his head. Yeah, uh, he's got credit in the bank, though. He, sh- he shouldn't be going anywhere. Like, fair play to Robbins. Um, I guess w- we'll see what happens because he keeps turning it around now. Uh, oh, we're not turning it around. He keeps changing it around. Like, playing, uh, I try to pronounce the guy's name, Joel Latibiade. Good effort. Thank you. Yeah. Um, playing like a left back at left wing back, trying to be more solid, unbreakable, or, you know, trying not to get broken down, bringing on Hadji Wright, starting just Ellis Sims. And Sakamoto on the bench as well. He's trying. He's trying to turn it around. I, well, I think we mentioned this last week. We've had quite a few comments in the last couple of weeks from Coventry fans critical of Hadji Wright and the effort and shifts he's putting in there. Because um, from outside, he looks almost like your star player, doesn't he? When he when he gets going and when he scores goals, he's unstoppable. But Coventry fans seem to have the view that he isn't putting in a proper shift. I picked him as top scorer this season. I feel like you a did, right yeah, mug. yeah. I bet you do now. Yeah, he barely makes the bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you could still do bits in his thirty minutes that he gets. Uh, right on to Blackburn Rovers once, once he nil, and that was a decent win for Rovers. Not too much to really shout about in this one, but good goal for Dolan. Yep. He's one that you know we could have gone for. I'm, I'm surprised. I think Blackburn up there. I think they're still going to revert to the mean. I, I don't. I don't see them uh, yeah, I being think in the playoffs. Good, it's just going to be a good start. I think two half, two different halves in a season. One half being really good, and mm. the next being, I think they'll slowly go back. It, it surprised. He's done. He's doing a fantastic job, and especially with the late recruitment in before the season started, because I thought they looked dead certain to go down. And mm. despite the late signings, he's really, really has proven a lot of people wrong. He's yeah. done well to paper over the Smodics crack. I'd definitely say uh, Cantwell's been a very shrewd signing by Rovers. He's been really, really good for them. Yeah, it's so weird. No one was really looking at Todd Cantwell, were they? But yeah, like fair play. Like Blackburn, they always seem to have like one player that just smashes it out of the park. You know, thirty plus goals, and the rest yeah. of the team are sort of playing keep up. Um, Swansea as well. They they look decent, is it? But they're, they're 
goals are hard to come by for Swansea. Yeah, they're Probably not. A bit they're more. not in any trouble though. They're gonna no. Gonna be a solid finish for them, I think. Yeah. Okay. On to a very surprising one: Middlesbrough nil, Bristol City two, and I, I feel fair play from the Bristol City team because uh, they they did it for Liam Manning and his uh, his kid who sadly passed away. Um, so everyone was sort of hoping for this one, but Middlesbrough. Well, they had their they, chances, didn't they? Middlesbrough, they need a hundred chances to score <laughs> one goal. Like I was watching the highlights, and well, they, 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 they had a hundred chances and scored no goals. They should have put the Benny Hill theme tune over <laughs> yeah. that. It, it was hilarious. It was bad, you speed it? that up, and yeah. they, they could have played that game for about a hundred hours and not very, scored. Very, very surprising how poor their finishing was, and they paid so for it because Bristol City were clinical. Yeah, that took a couple of great good chances, finishes, yeah. good good finishes, and that was the game. Also, the defense, like Middlesbrough's defense, was a little bit shambolic. Yeah, I'd say. there was an yeah. awful lot of space around the edge of that box. Yeah, I, I don't think Borough are going to make the playoffs this year. I, I think they'll miss oh, out. I don't know. Well, come uh, on, they've got to finish their chances. Yeah, yeah, but the good thing is they're creating them, and that's when you worry. If you're not creating those yeah. opportunities, okay, good point. Then. Yeah, I would be yeah. a lot more worried, but they are. And if it's just a matter of, right, we've got to put the ball in the back of the net, you can make those, you know, maybe different personnel, maybe one or two tweaks, but as long as you're creating those opportunities. Yeah, it's been a, been a bit like Luton, hasn't it? Underperforming their XG quite significantly. Yeah. Oh, and eventually that comes Very good. significant, yeah. though. It, like, it was just watching that and, you know, Latte Laugh is like dead on with the goalkeeper, slams it wide. It, it's absolutely shambolic. Right, and on to another team that does look relatively solid at the back and can finish their chances, Millwall. Millwall won, Derby County won. I think Millwall feel a little aggrieved here because they had the best of this game. They uh, really I did. had a draw in our predictions league, though, oh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy that they didn't finish their chances. Oh, okay. Well, one, one of my four points this week. Look, 16 shots from Millwall, five from Derby, and I reckon they're going, is Derby in the Midlands? Derby are taking this back up to sort of maybe the Midlands, um, <laughs> and they're happy with the point. I think it is in the Midlands, yes. On, on the M1 or whatever motorway goes up to Derby. don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Does Derby have a motorway? Yes, of course it has a motorway. Does it? I don't know. I thought oh, maybe just they made that up. I thought maybe they took the roads in like, uh, like in Cri uh, Father Ted Criddy. <laughs> you know? They've taken the roads in. Can't and get back to Derby. What accent is that? Is it Irish? No, it wasn't. I wasn't. Okay. They've taken the roads in. It was Mrs. Doyle, wasn't I thought it? Your editor said no. No. <laughs> no <impressions. laughs> that was a strict rule. <laughs> Good uh, Lord. Sorry, editor. <laughs> Kate. Bye. Sorry. I'm I'm done. Um, yeah. So, Millwall. I, I think really they'll be fine, right? Like shocked with them because the style of play is completely. It's not. Mil it's not, like. not Neil Harris, is it? No, and yeah. I looked at the Opta, and you know that Opta chart which said which teams were performing well on based on how they've performed using the data and so on. But Mill were third in the league on that, and I was just like, "What? Like, what's happened?" And to be fair, when I've when I've watched Mill play. They do look good. It, it's, it has just been an element of you need to start taking your chances more. Yeah. Same question, which we were talking about with Mark or Carrick. But defensively, they do look solid and mm. they can do a bit of both. I think they can go long and they can play about a bit. Well, just looking there, two wins, but they've got positive goal difference. And the next, so they're 20th, the next positive goal difference is Derby in 12th. So Millwall getting the goals, but they're not getting the results. They they look decent. Like obviously, <coughs> Tom Bradshaw is a massive, massive miss. Coburn is is he firing just yet? I think he might be injured. I think he got injured during the Millwall Luton game. And Macaulay Langstaff, yeah, but y you get what you get when you sign a player from League Two, regardless mm -hmm. of whether they're banging in the goals. They won't take every chance, but he gets in the right positions. They create the right chances. And defensively, they look really good. Um, you maybe yeah. give a bit, of, a slight bit of credit to Derby's keeper in that game as well. I think he made some incredible saves. Yeah, and he was their player of the match. So yeah, well, fair play to I can't pronounce his name. Zetstrom. Zetstrom. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. That, yeah. yeah, well done. Yeah, well done to Zetstrom for the the performance, and well done for pronouncing his name. Yeah, right on to QPR one. Portsmouth 2. Portsmouth get a win. I oh, know. First win of the season for Pompey. Play up Pompey. Rah, rah, rah. Um, 
that has got to be one of the most stupid penalties to give away that I've ever seen in a professional football match. I mean, the guy's running out of the penalty area. The ball's nowhere near him. He's not going anywhere. And he just absolutely bodied him. It was the clearest penalty you'll ever see and the most stupid I've ever seen. Yeah, well, it's a long old season. I'm sure there'll be even <laughs> even <laughs> There's more penalties. to come, yeah. I, I don't know where to go with QPR, really. Oh, like, fair play. Really. Like, I even thought against yeah. Luton, they looked really bad. Well, it was a couple of moments of brilliance that got them to yeah. beat Luton. But where end, are it? these moments of brilliance Well, they're, they're rare, aren't they? That's the thing. And, uh, you know, maybe Luton were just unlucky that QPR turned up for 15 minutes of the second half. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they don't look good, do they? No. Portsmouth, I'm glad they've got a win because they, if their start to the season was horrific. It was just They did all right, though, in, in, in know, that gauntlet of seven games that were horrendous, and then they get turned over by Stoke. Yeah, but doing all right and not having the points to show for it, that's when it hurts the most. But mm. now they are playing teams that they, on paper, feel like they should be getting points. So it's now business points. So the fact that they've now got a win on their belt, like that should mo- that momentum and the confidence mm. there should help them push on. I'm very happy for John Mucinio because I think he's done a great job there and he's assembled quite a good team. And um, obviously, they they had a massive uh, issue at the beginning of the season where their you know their striker had the the heart issue. Can't remember his name right now. Um, no, I can't. No, it, the name escapes me. But that's obviously a very big blow and the team have all pulled together they're doing it for him uh, and fair play Pompey like keep going and QPR I don't know where they go now because uh, they had 65% of the ball did nothing with it you think they're going down to league one that's what it looks like I mean yeah. just based on the performances I've seen they've been circling the drain for a few years now uh, and to be honest it's about a lot of managers have, have been sacked and teams yeah, have been it. reactive like Stoke have sort of turned the corner now. Um, but uh, I thought Marty Fuentes was a good manager. Well, I, I don't know what the QPR fan view of him is. Uh, no, I don't know either. I didn't bother going on their subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it'd be good to hear from them because it looks, from outside, it looks dire. Yeah. For me, I think it comes from the top. I think when you've got a strict way, because uh, they're still trying to balance the books, aren't they, from their relegation yeah. from the Premier League and the, the amount of debt because of miscontrolling finances. So I don't know if they're still paying the price for that. But when you've got... When you're not properly run from the top and you're not making those right transfers in the summer, like I don't think their recruitment was good. I felt Dembele was, but apart from that, I didn't think any other player was well, they, half yeah, decent. They got money in from Eze, but I imagine Ilias's chairs, um, legal fees are probably <laughs> making quite a dent. <laughs> Uh, is he ever going to pl- come back and play? I don't know. He's got this mysterious injury. I guess we'll see, won't we? Um, yeah, QPR fans, let us know in the comments. Apologies about the Ilias chair comment. Uh, but let us know what's going wrong at QPR. And on to Sheffield Wednesday nil, Burnley 2. Good win from Burnley. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday could have taken their chances, perhaps. There's a cruise for Burnley, really. Cruise to the top of the league, haven't they? I mean, just not didn't get out of third game, didn't need to, really. Yeah. What about Brownhill? What player? Top, top player. But yeah. I think the game plan which Burnley had, I think away from home, it suits them because they are a very good counter-attacking team. Yeah. And I think I think the question will always be for them, if they're going to compete for the top two, is how they do it at home against the better sides because the better sides defensively will be better. So can they break those teams down and play a different type of way at home compared to away? Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see if Sunderland overhaul them later. I think they probably will. But, you know, Burnley, Sunderland, Leeds, exactly. Um, I don't see Sunderland in, in the top two picture. Uh, but Sheff- I don't Sheffield United, yeah. Burnley, Sheffield yeah. United, Leeds, where we thought things would be before it's the start yeah, of the year. And that's where they are. Do three go into two? They don't. And uh, I think the, the top two battle is going to be a proper ding dong. I do like that. Yeah, especially after Luton giving everyone nine games head start. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> yes, nice. Uh, <laughs> Luton sliding into first, like yeah, final game of the season. Cracking league this year, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and people saying, oh, it's the weakest league. You know, the, if rubbish. you look at the Premier League this season, I think it's a worse standard than last well, season. With, with Arsenal losing yesterday yeah, um, and Liverpool inevitably going to be Liverpool at some point, mm-hmm. it's going to be Man City again, isn't it? What's the point? It's the most boring league in the it world. It really is. This is the best league in the world. And th- that's epitomised by 
Norwich one, Stoke City one, or should I say Stoke City one, Norwich one, because Stoke City were the home team. And to be frank, it's crazy because Norwich, they looked like they were cruising in fifth gear going into this, scoring goals for fun. They were, yep. Yeah, and then Stoke with new manager Nicholas Pellach, he seems he's got that Stoke team playing. Fair play to them. I think it's just Stoke this year, very, very difficult team to beat. Yeah, now. well, they're, no, now they now. are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, Norwich should have taken their chances. Um, I still think Norwich are a good playoff shout, outside playoff shout for me. Um, in fact, I think that's so much I've already put a bet on it. Um, so, yeah. I'd we don't condone betting here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we don't. No, we don't. We don't, we don't no, condone we betting. Do okay. not condone betting. Just to be clear, we don't condone betting here. Well, um, you can do what you want, really. Do, do what you want. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, bet responsibly I foolishly have put a bet on Norwich to make the playoffs. I think that's all right. I, I to be honest, I think Johan Hofarup he's he's done a decent job there. Uh, I I would put this down as like a speed bump because I think Norwich just have too many goals in that team. They really do. Any other thoughts about Norwich? Just I think they've been really surprising this season. Mm. You know when you well get a surprisingly ma- bad start. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when you bring in a manager in from overseas, you, you just don't know what they're going to do. Do they know the league well and? I think he's he's doing a good job. Yeah. No, no, fair play to Johan Hofarup. A lot of people were doubting it. And also they had a big change in terms of sporting director at the beginning of the season as well. I think Stuart Webber, he'd been there for a long time. He's moved on now. But I think we should probably wrap this up, right? Um, As always, a big thank you to our host, the Bricklayers Arms. And wherever you are in Luton, come on down. 31st of October, because we have... Should we do a, a live stream from the Halloween Beer Festival, Ollie? Oh, that's a good oh, idea, isn't that it? Is that is a So we, we will idea. be live from the Halloween Beer Festival talking about beer, probably not talking about football. Um, so come and join us. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, but come on down. It's 31st of October. I got it right this time. You did. Got my months right. And it'll be the whole week and there'll be Halloween-themed beers and good company, to be honest. And... Also, a big thank you to our audio partners, Black Star Amplification and Carry On for making sure that we sound great. And a big thank you to the record shop in Amersham, wherever you are in the country. Head on down to Amersham, get your vinyl, get your CDs, get your guitars, and mention the OK Football Show, and you might even get a discount. Just be nice about it. And we're back because international break is done. But there's thank another God. one. There's oh, another what? bloody international break what? coming up. When's another international break? It's just before Mid Christmas. November. Yeah. Oh, but why? 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 It's so rubbish. Uh, international football is pointless. I think we're going to have to start pulling a Fergie. <laughs> like, uh, you know, stop players from <laughs> yeah, going, from going international. Yeah. Oh, it's so pointless. I, so I, I just, international break. I don't care about the players. I just want some football to watch that isn't bloody England. So, in fact, I support two international teams, Italy and England, and they're both dreadful. You can always go watch the Loontown Ladies every Sunday. This Sunday, FA Cup, uh, home to St Albans, replay, yeah? Indeed. Two o'clock. Yep, yep two o'clock, I'll be there. Uh, well, this is pointless, of course, because this oh, show will go out after out. the game is finished. This goes out on Monday. So, yeah, if you if you invent a time travel device, go back to Sunday, and then you can go watch Town Ladies versus St Albans in the FA Cup first round. But if not, you know, go not support the, your local the, non-league. Not the, not the first round of the FA Cup. Oh, it's the last qualifying, the qualifying round. round ah. the FA Cup. The, well, there the you best go. of the qualifying rounds. It's, it's very enjoyable. Um, but as always, whoever you support, I hope you all have a great week.